In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct a Friedman's ANOVA on data that are scored on a limited ordinal scale. And in this case, the data are scored on a four-point scale relevant to how much people liked classical music. And a lower rank suggests they disliked it, and a higher rank suggests that they appreciated it more. Now, these are the actual ratings provided by the participants. And I also have here the four ranked scores that are produced in order to conduct the Friedman procedure. Now you don't actually have to do these ranks. I'm going to talk about these ranks more in another video relevant to conducting a one-way within subjects ANOVA on ranked data. And I talk about that in the advanced chapters, so check that out if you're interested. So for this example, I'm only interested in these scores here. So in order to conduct the analysis, go into Analyze, Nonparametrics, legacy dialogues, k-related samples, and we just want these four here, first, second, third, and fourth exposure to the classical music. You can click on statistics and get the descriptives. You'll see that they're not actually very interesting. Now when you conduct the Friedman, make sure that Friedman's selected, and make sure you select Kendall's W, because then it'll give you an estimate of effect size automatically. Click on OK. So here are those descriptive statistics that SPSS estimated. These are the means associated with the ratings. And as I mentioned in the textbook, Friedman's ANOVA is a test of the difference between mean ranks. So estimating the mean ratings is useful in the sense that it's informative. But as far as the Friedman's ANOVA is concerned, it's not based on those differences. So it's a bit misleading to report only these mean ratings. Really what you should be reporting are the mean ranks because that is the level at which the analysis is being tested. So the null hypothesis is that these mean ranks are equal to each other within sampling fluctuations. When we look at them, we can see a numerical difference. In fact, it looks like it's increasing upwardly, but we don't know if the null hypothesis has been rejected. However, if we go to the next table, this is the Friedman's ANOVA test. It says it right here, Friedman test. And with a sample size of 20 and three degrees of freedom, a chi-square value of 23.67 was estimated and that is statistically significant. Therefore, we can conclude that these mean ranks are not all equal to each other. We do not know which ones are statistically significantly different from each other. We'd have to do some follow-up testing. Before I do so, I'll point out Kendall's W test was selected, and the advantage of getting the Kendall's W is that you get the estimate of effect size, which I mentioned in the textbook is an estimate of partial eta squared. It's essentially identical to partial eta squared estimated from ranked data. Now I also mentioned in the textbook in this particular example that Friedman's ANOVA is not a test of the difference between medians. And I'm going to prove that to you right now by estimating the medians associated with these data. So I'm going to grab the first to fourth ratings, put them in the variables box, click statistics, and I'm going to get the medians for each of those four levels. Click OK. And we can see that the median was estimated at 2.50 exactly for each of the four levels. So the fact that the null hypothesis of equal measure of central tendency has been rejected, and the fact that the medians are exactly the same is incompatible with the idea that the Friedman tests the null hypothesis of equal medians. It's testing the hypothesis of equal mean ranks. It's not the same hypothesis. So I've tested the null hypothesis of equal mean ranks. It's been rejected. It looks like exposure to classical music is increasing people's appreciation, and the effect size is 0.394. I mentioned in the textbook that a lot of people would follow this up with Wilcoxon signed rank tests or a sign test, because those are dedicated tests of the difference between only two mean ranks. But I also mentioned in the textbook that Friedman's ANOVA works equally well on two levels as it does on three, four, or more. And it just seems more consistent to follow up a Friedman ANOVA with an analysis that's the same as the Friedman ANOVA in terms of statistical estimation. And so I can actually conduct a series of multiple comparisons. So go into Analyze, Nonparametrics, Legacy Dialogues, K-Related Tests. So I'm just going to look at the first and second levels of the within subjects factor. And that was found to be statistically significant. So the mean rank 1.3 versus 1.7, statistically significant, p less than 0 0.005, and a chi-square value of 8.00. Now, what I'll point out is that the mean ranks have actually changed. 
So for the first level, first exposure to classical music, the mean rank was 1.3 in the comparison of just first versus second exposure. But in the large analysis, it was 1.73. And the first one here is 1.3. And that's because the ranking procedure occurs across levels within a subject. And so as you change the levels, the rankings change. They're being calculated for each case across their scores. So that's very different than the Kruskal-Wallis, which is estimating ranks across people. So next, I'm just going to keep comparing each of the comparisons with just two this can go on for a little while. I'll just show you what. So that was statistically significant. First versus fourth, of course. I actually skipped the third. So let's look at first and third. Also statistically significant. Just keep going. Second and third. Statist uh, not statistically significant. So the difference between the second exposure and the third exposure did not yield a statistically significant effect. P equal 0 0.083 and a Kendall's W of 0.15. So that one wasn't statistically significant. And then finally, let's look at three and four. Third and fourth also not statistically significant. So there's a mixture of statistically significant and non-significant effects on the basis of the multiple comparisons. Now, because I have four levels, I should apply some sort of protection to help keep the family-wise error rate at 0 0.05. And a Bonferroni correction could be something, which is a single-step procedure. You wouldn't have to do the omnibus Friedman ANOVA that I did at the beginning. So in summary, I tested the hypothesis of equal mean ranks across four levels of a within subjects factor on data that were measured with a limited four-point ordinal scale. The data are converted to ranks. I'm going to talk about that more in the advanced chapter about how it calculates these ranks. I rejected the null hypothesis of equal mean ranks. I showed you that it's not a test of the medians because the medians are exactly the same when you go from first to fourth. So I think that pretty much proves that it's not a test of the medians. It's a test of the mean ranks. And then finally, I did some follow-up post-hoc tests and found a mixture of significant and non-significant effects. I should be applying some sort of correction in order to be confident that the family-wise error rate hasn't exceeded 0 0.05.